After the latest batch of sanctions, after the Navalny death, uh, there was like a 500 additional sanctions put against Russia. And so China's top, or was it three out of their top four banks, which are the four, three of the, uh, the five biggest banks in the world, all of them bigger than J.P. Morgan and Chase, they officially cut off Russia uh, from doing business with them. So I'm wondering, what is it about these sanctions that were unique about, like compared to the last sanctions? Because why, like Russia was supposed to be friends with China. Uh, they're supposed to be in a good situation, supposedly. A lot of people are saying that Russia's still in a position of strength. But I'm also hearing they're having to ship physical shipments of gold around the world to make payments. So do you have an opinion on, on which side of that's true? Like, Well, you know, the, the economic sanctions have actually backfired. And President Trump was using economic sanctions a lot mm -hmm. because he wanted to draw back troops from around the world. So he didn't want to assign troops to hotspots. He would use economic weapons like sanctions. Mm -hmm. But one of the downsides of it, and we're seeing this now, is that it's been driving the BRICS nations, mm -hmm. as we call them. So it's Brazil, Russia, India, uh, China, um, and there are some others that are now joining, Saudi Arabia. Um, they're coming together because they want to explore a separate currency. Mm -hmm. And it's called de-dollarization. So they want the world to move away from the dominance of the U.S. dollar and the dollar as the world's reserve currency. So a good thing is when Russia and China are separate and every American president has tried desperately and worked really hard to keep Russia and China away from each other because when they unite, it's very bad for us. Yeah. You get a monolith of, of an enemy there and that's very dangerous for, for us. So that actually is quite good news yeah. that at least f economically, the Bank of China and these other big Chinese financial institutions are moving away from the Russians. But keep in mind, they are still working together in a lot of other ways. Russia has remained rich through all of these sanctions, Trump and now Biden sanctions, because they're putting their oil on the world market, right? Yeah. So oil is fungible, money is fungible. Bad guys will always find a way to get around these things. Um, the, the Chinese and the Russians are working together in a lot of other ways as well, and they will find ways around, around this. Um, and it's a very, very dangerous moment, especially since they are now joining forces, like I said, to get, us, get the world to abandon the U.S. dollar as a reserve currency. That happens. COVID looks like a walk in the park. The Great Recession, the Great Depression looks like a walk in the park. We will go pl be plunged into a global depression if that were to happen oh, God. and we would lose our superpower status but that's what our enemies want the yeah. chinese the russians they, they all want that so they're trying to get us there so you've got that movement to a separate currency and guys i gotta tell you the second the saudis get on board with a different currency it's over and trade oil oh, God. in a different currency it's over yeah. it's over for the u.s economy it's over for all of us we are done. And the Saudis have already been on the record saying, yeah, we're interested in They're interested in it. That. I read so that. You pair that de dollarization move with the movement towards a central bank digital currency. Brandon's favorite. <laughs> I, I mean, your economic freedom is completely over. And now you're a surf. You're a real mm -hmm. slave to the state. No more free market. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm, right. I'm uh, honestly like 0% concerned uh, as far as like a threat from another country replacing a dollar because I don't think that country exists. Like, but I am very much afraid of the uh, central bank digital currency. Like, I think it would have to be that if it, there were to be a replacement for the dollar. But I can't imagine something replacing the dollar right now because of how it's systematically built in it, the, with the infrastructure and everything. You know, like, uh, do you have an opinion on that? Like, how do you imagine another country being a suitable replacement? Because I can't. No, not a single country. But if you have this consortium of other countries that are very strong, like China and Russia and India, they're all coming together to develop their own currency as a competing currency to the dollar. Great. And who? Like, so not a single one can do it, but if they all got together, you'd have a formidable challenge. The gold-backed BRICS currency. Yeah. It, so do you, uh, could do you, be. Are you concerned about that, or you think it's? I'm, a, so, I'm so worried about it. Really? Because you have these two tracks. You've got the BRICS track, which is like our friend Steve Bannon calls the end of the dollar empire. Oh, great. Right? And yeah. so yeah, that's one track. And then you've got the CBDCs, uh, central bank digital currencies, which is the end of your economic freedom. And now you're a real slave to the state. So between those two tracks that are going like a million miles an hour down each track, they're running parallel. But they're going to convene at one point mm -hmm. to strip you of all of your freedom. Oh, I mean, yeah. you, you won't have any economic privacy. You'll have no economic freedom. 
And, you know, we're talking about China. China has the social credit score system. Yeah. And this is all part of that, too, where, you know, if you, oh, say, overstep your monthly allotment for carbon output, say you drove to Miami. And set up for a lot and, of hell, yeah. And, right. And it's registered as, oh, you know, Vinny went over his carbon footprint for the month. Now they will have the right to shut off your ability to access your own money. And because they want everybody to let your car, they can shut your car down. Oh. So you physically cannot move your car. Oh my They'll God. stop your ability to, say, buy airline tickets, mm-hmm. you know, that, for oh my God. or whatever. That was I mean, it sounds dystopian and crazy, it's not, but... I don't think it sounds that crazy no, because they're, they're trying to... in China, China right bill. now. That was part of the, um, bill, or the Inflation Reduction Act that all new cars had to have a kill switch in them. Right. That's, yeah, so it's not, yeah, it's not yeah. like this random maniac. I wish people read into bills and ready like that that's their goal is to have everything digitized so like you said if they're like hey listen you're only going to have two stakes this month you can't buy with this car your your money it won't let it buy that or like you said shut your car off shut or if you get uh, apparently i think in china if you're if you're linked with somebody and they don't pay a fine or a ticket your shit gets shut off too. Yeah. They'll take money out of your account. association. That's a very, very dangerous, slippery slope. And I think because Trump isn't Trump anti oh, he's, CBDC. He's, he's, totally, finally, totally. yeah, he doesn't he said, want not it. Not on my watch. But the moment we left the Treasury Department on January twentieth yeah. of twenty twenty one, and Jenny Yellen and her huh. team came in, they started a pilot program to examine central bank digital currency. Yeah. So that program has been ongoing for three years now. And the UK has one as well. The Germans have a pilot program. So these globalists who are have been installed in throughout the West, they are examining this and they want us there. And the sister part of this is surveillance. So after 9-11, they did FISA under the guise of we have to be watching terrorists around the world, right? And here in America, so the FISA, the warrantless surveillance and wiretaps and all of that, what we now know is the deep state, the CIA, NSA, etc. They turned those fearsome weapons that were meant for America's worst enemies against us. Yep. Mm-hmm. They were spying on Trump, spying on January Sixers, spying on all of us probably, <laughs> of right? Course. Through our phones. But all of the surveillance can be economic as well. Yeah. So if they get the central bank digital currency, your money will not be a tangible asset in your wallet like a ten dollar bill. It'll be a line of software right. um, in the Fed. So the Fed will be the only bank and your money will be a line of software and they'll be able to watch everything you spend it on. You spend a dollar on a pack of gum, the government will know that um, yeah. and, and then be able to turn it off. They're already trying to sell it to us and pitch it to us too. They're saying, oh, no, guys, we could control inflation this way. Like if oil gets too expensive, we could just limit how much oil can be bought in a certain time and it'll bring yeah. the price of it down. Or if we need to do stimulus quickly, we could give you stimulus they'll, quickly. They'll make yeah. it like it's a, like everything. everything like it's so convenient. Yeah, everything is guys under. It's convenient. You don't want just... Just right. put your hand at, at Whole Foods. Right. Put your palm there, and it'll charge you. Bitch, I never <laughs> signed up for that. Where yeah. yes. you, know, you could just show up there and put your palm. And it's like, can you imagine everything is tracked? Your bubble gum is tracked. You're, 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 this is like, yeah, Rob, you can't buy panties anymore. Like, Rob, they would follow <laughs> right. every they, single thing that you they do. They hate people eating meat. This is something they keep talking about and how it's contributing to the greenhouse effects and everything. Yeah. I think that's probably the most interesting part of all this because... What money is ultimately about behaviors because what you're consuming is is what you're doing. And Larry Fink said that ESG is about enforcing behaviors. That was his term. Yeah, I remember that. Behaviors. Yeah. And uh, if you if you really want to weaken your populace, forget about guns. If you don't let men have protein, if you don't let <laughs> people build be weak. muscle, yeah. they're literally going to be the most servile human race that's ever well, been. Well, they want boys. you getting your protein through bugs. Yeah, right, yeah. yeah. No. yeah like, 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 a, like, a, like a cricket I'm, grinder. I'm like, no, I'm good, bro. I'm, I'm good. I tell you, I have a bug phobia. Oh, like, like, I'd rather have a mouse in my apartment <laughs> than a roach. Okay? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I would literally starve to death if bugs were my only option. And Well, that's what they, yeah. that's what they want us to I be know. eating. I'm, I'm watching a lot more of them on YouTube where they're trying to normalize. You're like, listen, it's, 
and are not that like, bad. If you it's the same amount of protein. Yes, yeah. 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 guess what? You put a little salt, some yeah. you know, spice, yeah. some spice. Yeah. Who yeah. gives a shit? Close your eyes. And it helps climate change. And, oh, but sign me up. I'll eat a, a, yeah, a roach burger. <laughs> Brandon, you were going to show another yeah. So, um, just the last thing, I, I'm a thousand percent agree with you that the CBDC is like the number one threat to us and our freedom. Um, but in the terms of the BRICS thing, I, I don't really think I, that's a serious threat because. At the end of the day, I think that people have to like choose like what currency they feel comfortable holding. Like in Turkey, for example, I think the majority of the citizens hold dollars instead of the Turkish lira because the way that the price appreciates of it. So, you know, this chart, the bottom blue, it shows that actually dollar holdings have went up since the sanctions went on, uh, happened in 2022. So that's uh, all dollar holdings. The next one is a euro. Then the rest of them, you can't even see them because of how Jeez. small it is. So that's international transactions in dollar, euro, number one, number two. But uh, I think that's going to be like a more of a slow burn thing over the next like five to ten years as far as them trying to get us to a CBDC. Because I know like 93% of the country or the central banks in the world are trying to work on one right now. And that's like 95% of global GDP. So that's definitely something I'm afraid of. Yeah. But it's a matter of the people accepting it, though. So that's why like way more people have to be fearful about this and be talking about it and me against it. I think. And they have to be educated about what it is and what it would mean for their lives and their country. Yeah. They, they don't know. And I, you know, I, I agree with you on the BRICS mm -hmm. thing. This takes a longer period of time and the U S dollar is still relatively strong, but we've got a $34 trillion national debt. Well, you know, it's I mean, we're going to hit an economic wall here pretty it's soon. soon. Yeah. It's coming. And it's going to be so painful for the American people who have no idea what's coming. Quick question. So, this is actually real. I heard something really interesting la last week from uh, you know George Gammon. You ever heard that name mm -hmm. before? So he, we were talking about the U.S. debt and um, how the rest of the world is dependent on U.S. debt because treasuries are necessary for when you do cash or related transactions in, in like the international economy. So right now there's a treasury shortage, like a collateral shortage, meaning that if we were to reduce our deficit spending, th that shortage would be even greater and that would hurt the world economy. And potentially cause an international economic crisis. So, you know, that's he he brought up Triffin's paradox, where we have to simultaneously like hurt ourselves to like help the rest of the world because it's a debt-based monetary system. I'm not so sure about that. No, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Question: I was really curious about from one of your uh, videos the other day when you were breaking down the euro dollar system and how there's actually a shortage of collateral. Um, does that mean that when Congress deficit spends that that's actually alleviate, alleviating that problem of the treasury shortage? And that, like, I, I doubt that they're smart enough to where they would be doing, like, deficit spending to alleviate that treasury shortage, but would uh, um, reducing the amount of deficit spending actually make that problem worse? So this is a great question. <laughs> Thanks. This is a fantastic question. And this is something that I try to get people to think about, because a lot of people understand Triffin's paradox. Mm -hmm. or Triffin's Dilemma. Yeah. But they understand it through the lens of the dollar, meaning that uh, back in 44, Keynes and, and, and Triffin came out and said, yeah, be careful of that Bretton Woods deal <laughs> because what this means is the, dollar, or is the United States is going to have to create enough dollars for the global economy. And although that may benefit the global economy, that'll probably come at the detriment of the U.S. economy. Mm. See? So now what, what's fascinating is we have a similar setup with treasuries, to your point, mm -hmm. where in order to provide the monetary system enough collateral, the United States government needs to run bigger and bigger and bigger deficits. But if they do that, although that might be better for the global economy, that's going to be a lot worse for the U.S. economy. Right. You see, so, so you're in this, this very weird kind of catch-22. Now, you could say, well, George, screw the other countries. we got to focus on the United States. <laughs> you know, Trump... We got to make America great again. We got to focus on our problems here. So if they need treasuries, you know, tell them to pound sand. Okay, well, think that one through. Because if the global economy suffers, you don't think the United States economy is going to suffer as well?